Product not yet rated. I'm the creative director for Dead Space 3. And I'm the senior audio artist on Dead Space 3. And we're going to take a look at our current single player demo. Isaac, Carver, God damn it, give me a hand here! As the demo begins, Isaac Clark finds himself on a ship called the Eudora, which happens to uh, belong to this guy here who he's handing a welding torch to. The ship has just been nearly obliterated by an attack, and now they're trying to make their way off the ship. Carver, where can I find an EVA suit? This is a scene I love for audio because there's so much going on, and yet we've still found a way to, to use subtlety in, in the scene, even amidst all of the choking, the explosions, and the bombast. There are like shards of glass floating around like a cloud in the environment that signal to the player that you, know, you have to go this way, and yet it's very dangerous to go this way. In this part, Isaac desperately is trying to get his spacesuit on in time. The clock is counting down, and the, the ship is on fire. It's about to blow up. He gets the cabinet open, and his helmet goes flying out into outer space. So he knows he only has a minute or something before he's going to suffocate. And he launches himself into space after that helmet, which is his lifeline. Uh, and he gets it just in the nick of time uh, as he finds himself in the middle of the Eudora as it's flying to pieces. Guys, okay, I, I see it. That's a fire something to hang on to. Section, Isaac is flung out of the exploding Eudora spaceship uh, and he finds himself hurtling, you know, 100 miles an hour through space uh, as pieces of this ancient uh, flotilla are whizzing by him. And what this did is it gave us a really uh, excellent opportunity for introducing the, the next setting for Isaac in the game, which is this derelict flotilla. Uh, lost a long time ago in outer space. You've got Isaac, this little insignificant guy, flying through massive pieces of ship that are just tumbling left and right. Uh, we wanted to create an intense feeling of chaos for the player, so they just can almost not comprehend how much stuff is going on around them. And they're, they're freaking out about which way they have to go left or right, and, and as they're going, they're just seeing pieces of ancient history tumbling by. And very much so is kind of like the evolution of the, the halo jump that we did in Dead Space 2 as well. I mean, sonically and gameplay-wise, there's so much going on. We took the environment and created three new threats within that environment, and we had to pay off on all of those sonically, making sure that the gameplay was thrilling as could be. In a scene like this, on one of the prior games, we would have made it much more aleatoric and just about kind of tone clusters and chord swells that are really difficult to relate to. And I think that we're inching towards going towards a more thematic musical approach. There's no way to activate the cargo doors. What about that door? You got a manual crank. No, that's right. I'll see if I can get inside. In this section, Isaac is separated from the rest of his crew. He's run out of options. He had previously just been flying through space, and now the only thing left for him is to go into this derelict ship. It's his only hope of oxygen and some parts that he can scavenge and upgrade his equipment and somehow survive this event that's happened to him. Looks like I'm the first person to come through here in a long time. 
There's essential air. <laughs> Tastes like dirt. Sonically, I think it's really unique in all of Dead Space because it's one of the qu most quiet environments we've ever created. So you, it really amplifies that sense of Isaac's being alone and being separated from his crew and going deeper into finding out what happened here. this ship, but I can't leave Rosen and lock. Send me the coordinates. I'll go check it out. Here you go. You don't stray too far. That's an order. My favorite moment right here. Door opens, lights shining through, and illuminates everything beyond the door, which oh. happens to be what happened to the crew. And now you find out that something more sinister has happened to them. weapon ready and you stay the hell away from the ventilation ducts. If they get close, shoot for the limbs. You got that? I said you got that! Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. One thing that I think is really interesting about the Necromorphs this time out is that they, they've been made out of uh, these 200-year-old uh, mummified corpses. So as you're going through the ship, you just, you find uh, these kind of crusty, uh, crackling, strange aberrations that, that uh, have been turned into necromorphs from a long, long time ago. It's just a really interesting way to see what the necromorph infection would do to a mummy.
This part is where we're bringing back in one of the favorite enemies from the Dead Space franchise, the Lurker. But in Dead Space 3, it was important to uh, reimagine them into something different. So what we did is we made it based off of a dog rather than a child, uh, what the original one was. And the reasoning behind that is that the, uh, this government that, whose flotilla that you're exploring, they just so happen to have needed dogs as part of the um, effort to find things on the planet that they were looking for. Similar to what you would do with uh, earthquake victims where you'd have uh, dogs that would go out and search for things because they get a scent. These dogs just happen to have been turned into necromorphs and now we get to see what happens when an animal gets turned into something uh, necromorphic rather than uh, a human. We're going to skip ahead to our favorite part of the demo, the generator room. There's a lot going on in here. It's a big spectacle. Let us know what you think. Norton, you there? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. All right, I think that's holding them for now. Good. The SOS is coming from directly above me. And it looks like I found the ship's primary generator. If I can get power going, it should unlock the crossover for you. All right, what about you? Uh, there's an elevator here that goes straight up the spire. I'll meet you at Ellie's coordinates.
We are powered. The crossover just opened up. Rosen, lock and stick foot. I think Carver will rendezvous with the spire. Got it. So thanks for watching. We made this for our fans, for you guys, and uh, you can find more of this at deadspace.com. Let us know what you think. We're on Facebook and on Twitter.